The 49ers making another signing, Hassan Ridgeway, defensive tackle from the Philadelphia Eagles. Still some reports out there with the 49ers and Deshaun Watson. I know Croc has some thoughts on this one. And the Niners just missed on an elite-level pass rusher in free agency. We'll get to all that and more coming up right now. You are Locked On 49ers, your daily San Francisco 49ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On 49ers, Brian Peacock and Eric Crocker with you. Thanks for making us your first listen here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day day uh we, we i think we got to go live tomorrow you want to go live on thursday Is no one, all right we, we got to have a jimmy g trade coming i can feel it deep into my bones no yeah, no you feel it no jimmy yeah oh you don't feel it oh it's cooking well, up you weren't you weren't very i mean you were optimistic and then that that percentage started kind of going down a little bit it went back up it went and, back up and now, now you're back up yeah it went back up new league year officially started the 49ers can look call back those teams and say hey team remember how you thought maybe we we're gonna have to cut jimmy g yeah we ain't cutting jimmy g we just got under the cap we got enough under the cap even to sign charvarius ward we just signed hassan ridgeway we can do some things now let's talk about jimmy g because you know we're not cutting him let's dance and then obviously i think the, Desha the deshaun watson stuff has to happen first you want to get into the deshaun watson stuff i've been trying not to put too much into this because i don't think this story makes sense and is realistic at all connecting the 49ers with deshaun watson and look i have no doubt that Deshaun Watson would love to be on the 49ers. If I was Deshaun Watson, I would choose the Niners over all those teams too. But apparently there's four finalists and it's three teams in the NFC South, the Falcons, the Saints, the Panthers, and then Cleveland Browns very interested now. And maybe the Browns are going to do something with, um, with Baker Mayfield. And it sounds like that's going to have to end no matter what. Could the Browns potentially trade away? Like the only Deshaun Watson angles I'm interested in is how it gets Jimmy Garoppolo onto another team. Not about Deshaun Watson coming to the 49ers. I think it's completely unrealistic, but I could see a scenario where Deshaun Watson ends up with uh, either the Saints or the Panthers. I think they're the most likely. Then what if the Browns still get rid of Baker Mayfield? What if the Browns send Baker Mayfield to the Seahawks? And then is that the new home for Jimmy Garoppolo after they create some space? Would and the Seahawks offense, want him though? Like, the would the Seahawks, sense. would the Seahawks say, you know what, we got Drew Locke, but nah, let's go with Baker Mayfield instead. They better. Drew Locke is. Remember all the things I said about Mitch Trubisky the other day. Yeah, Drew Locke is that, and maybe worse. Like Drew, like Drew, and and there was a report today. Pete Carroll talked about. Uh, how he liked Drew Locke before the draft. I mean, good luck with but that. But everybody likes everybody b before the draft. Oh, yeah. But then course. you actually get to play them or see them play. Yeah. Oh, real quick. So I was in, you know, I have this guy that we're always kind of discussing things on Twitter, and I try to bring a different perspective to, to his brain. But he was talking about, like, well, don't you think it's it's funny that the Texans wouldn't want uh, Trey Lance? And I'm like, well, they, they like Davis Mills. And he's like, well, do you, you know, they wouldn't do that for – uh, which his guy is Zach Wilson. He's like, they wouldn't do that with Zach Wilson. They 100% take Zach Wilson over Davis Mills. And I'm like, well, why, why would they do that? Like, it would be one thing if you're talking about as a prospect, but they've seen Zach Wilson play now. They've seen Davis Mills play. And there's an argument that Davis Mills, in just about a bad situation, played a lot better and was much more consistent, especially the second half of the season. So why would you just assume that they would much rather have Zach Wilson when – We've seen the guys play. Matter of fact, Zach Wilson played against Houston Texans. He threw for like 120 yards, one interception, zero touchdowns. He also, uh, they have like this similar game there where Zach Wilson played against the the pa uh, Patriots. It was the third quarter. He had four completions and four interceptions. <laughs> well, Davis Mills played against that team, threw for over 300 yards, three touchdowns, zero picks. Like he's balling. And again, he doesn't have great uh, weapons outside of Cooks, who's really good. Like, so why would you just assume that this, you know, they still feel the same way about this prospect? That same thing with Drew Lockett. Okay, yeah, you liked him pre-draft, but we've seen him play now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and he's had plenty of opportunities, and he got beat out by Teddy Bridgewater. Like they gave him, like, okay, it's yours. Here, take it. And he got in late that year, couldn't really do it. Played like, 
it hasn't been very good. So, you know, okay, I hear you, Pete Carroll, but I don't, I don't believe you. Nothing, and it's the same argument with Mitch Trubisky. Nothing he's shown you in the NFL, and even less than Mitch Trubisky, nothing Drew Locke has shown you in the NFL would make you think he's going to be your guy and your NFL quarterback. So you're just lying to yourself at that point. And you know, for 49ers fans, they, they should just sit back and enjoy that because that is not going to end well with what's yeah. going on with the Seahawks right now. Not good. There's at least an argument. We've seen Baker Mayfield play pretty well and before his injuries this year he was he was on a much different track like we we wouldn't have been talking about this with baker mayfield 12 calendar months ago right so there is um there's an a level of baker mayfield that if you could get him on the cheap and, and if that's what it's going to cost and that's what it looks like in trade that you might get an angry career uh you know playing for his contract baker mayfield that's a lot better than Drew Locke. I mean, the, the Seattle Seahawks better be interested in Baker Mayfield, in my opinion. And, and maybe Baker Mayfield is not the guy that everyone thought he's going to be at number one overall when he was drafted a few years ago, but he's better than Drew Locke. So um, I don't know. If, if, we'll is see he if better than giving up compensation? For, well, like, you know it, like, that's the question. What's the compensation is is the question. And well, there's it's, it's the same all thing with place. Jimmy Garoppolo, yeah. Jimmy Garoppolo and signing Mitchell Trubisky. Would you rather trade draft capital for Jimmy and his contract or be able to just sign Trubisky to way less money and use him as a bridge quarterback? I think that would be the same thing. You have Drew Locke. Right. Would you rather play with Drew Locke or have to trade for Mayfield, uh, Baker Mayfield, and potentially have to restructure his contract or extend him or whatever else you have to do with him? My argument to both of those would be the same, and it's not so much either or. It's that Trubisky – and lock aren't options. I don't care what they cost. That's not my answer. Period. Okay. So if if Jimmy's not your answer, that's cool too. You don't do that either, but it's not an either or. It's not like having a bad quarterback and paying him a little bit is better than having a decent quarterback and paying him too much. So I would rather pay I'd rather pay too much for an okay quarterback and at least be good than pay a little bit for a bad quarterback and be terrible. Right. Or like I'm go if, if I'm the Seahawks and I don't like Baker Mayfield, I'm drafting somebody at nine. I'm not going to Drew Locke. That's that's that would my that would be my answer. There there's no there's no Mitch Trubisky or Drew Locke being my answer at quarterback, period. I don't care what the cost is. And I think part of that is kind of the dilemma with quarterbacks like Jimmy Garoppolo, like Kirk Cousins, where you're you know, like Derek Carr, where you're kind of in this tier of I'm I'm good enough to where you you can you win games with me. Jared Goff, he was that with the Rams, right? Like you you'll win games with me, but I'm probably not going to do a whole lot to consistently get you over the top. So like when you are kind of there, you really have to take advantage of it and strike gold in that scenario. Because if not, like it's it gets a little tricky. And we've seen that with the 49ers tw twice now with Jimmy Garoppolo, where it's like. We're, we're so close, but we just need you to make a play. And he's like, well, I'm not really capable of making that play that you need me to make in this moment. Like, that's not really me. And, you know, you saw that with Jared Goff. Same thing. They were in the Super Bowl. That was a high-powered offense, and he put up numbers. But it was like, dude, I know we're playing against the Patriots. We need you to make a play. And he's like, I, I can't do it. Like, I can't do it. It's okay. Get rid of him. Get Stafford. Stafford to make that play. Stafford gets in the Super Bowl. He's making no-look throws and things like that. And I'm not saying you have to do that, but. That that's the struggle when and kind of the argument for or against Jimmy Garoppolo, where it's like, yeah, we win with him. And the Rams are like, man, we won with golf. Like, how many people, how many teams won more games than golf in that stretch uh, with McVay? But they realize that's not that's ideally not going to cut it. Like, ideally, like that's not going to be enough. I think that's where the 49ers are right now. But the struggle is, what what what's the other side of it, like the unknown with a Trey Lance or a Drew Locke or someone like that, where it's just like, dang, we might need a Trubisky. And you're saying you'd rather just not have that type of guy at all. Yeah. It's like, how much, to, how much is too much to pay to get into the tier of quarterback between 12 and 20 or 15 and 20? Because when you're outside of the top 32 quarterbacks, which Drew Locke is, the Seattle Seahawks don't have a starting NFL quarterback right now. They don't have one of the top 32. How much is too much to pay to get into that? And you would actually absolutely be getting into that group if you went and got someone like Baker Mayfield. And, and potentially... But, but, it's getting in. He's shown. And, but how much is but it going to cost? Is it worth the cost? That's the question. 
is getting into it good enough though? Like if you're getting into the top 18 to 32, is is that enough? And I think it's, you yeah. the 49ers to tell you, well, if you ask them, oh yeah, we could win win, win a lot of game with them. But I think behind closed closed doors, they tell you it's not it's not enough. I think the 49ers would tell you it is enough because they've just been paying Jimmy Garoppolo and we saw what it looked like with CJ Beathard and with Nick Mullins. And if your answer right now is CJ Beathard, which to be honest, isn't that much far further off from where Drew Locke is Jimmy Garoppolo. The difference in that is getting to the NFC championship game. No, but you're not comparing Jimmy, right? You're not comparing Jimmy to Drew Locke or Beathard or Mullins. You're comparing him to the big dogs. And in the moment against the big dogs, can he make the play to get you over the top? Or do you need everything to be perfect around him to where someone else makes the play? A block punt return for a touchdown against Green Bay. Raheem Mostert running for 3,000 yards in the NFC Championship game. You know, like, he, you know, he, he needs that. So... I think what it is with Jimmy is and what Kyle would tell you is I know at least we'll have a chance and and maybe Kyle, Kyle has to be the difference more so than the actual quarterback who's good enough to get him there. Whether it was Jimmy, it it happened to be Jimmy Garoppolo, but I feel like with Kyle, it could have been Kirk Cousins. It could be Derek Carr. It could be, you know, Baker Mayfield. It could be one of those quarterbacks. And I think you would get similar results in the sense of being right there on the cusp of it. But they more more than likely are going to kind of leave you where it's like just not quite good enough to get me holding that trophy, right? And yeah, and it's the difference in a coach getting fired is is at least being good enough to get to the point where you could win a trophy or just a complete disaster. So so to me, it, it is somewhat worth being in there if you think you can compete. And most of these coaches and teams probably think that they can compete if they have a decent quarterback but you're disqualifying yourself if you don't have one of those top 20 quarterbacks in the nfl so um and and the big dogs you talked about they're not available deshaun watson already said no to the seahawks russell wilson's already gone you already had that you know you you can't go get tom brady you can't go get aaron Rodgers. you can't go get mahomes or herbert or uh real real quick too I, I don't well, want to dismiss or Josh Allen. What's, what's your option? Well, right. There's no big dog available. So go win as much as you can or or play for a draft pick. You know, it's one right. And I, I don't want to dismiss Jimmy Garoppolo because people I'm I'm over here talking about uh, not quite, you know, this and that. People are like, well, he outdueled uh Dak Prescott. Well, he outdueled uh Aaron Rodgers twice now. And I would say, but did he? It's a team game. It's a team. It's a team game. Uh, I'm going to go through what Jim Trotter of NFL.com put together here in a thread of tweets about the 49ers and Deshaun Watson. For some reason, this story should die and it will not crock. And after that, let's talk about Hassan Ridgeway, the latest San Francisco 49ers free agent signing after I let the folks know about Bet Online and crock. It's tourney time. The college basketball tournament is fully upon us. From all the latest odds, contests, and player props, betonline.net is the number one source for all your sports betting needs and information. BetOnline remains the best spot for not only sports wagering, but go find all the info, sports scores. There's podcasts and news this season and it's not just basketball it's not just football yeah you can go bet on some nfl still even though the season is over well where will free agents land super bowl futures draft props uh pro and college hoops don't forget about those pro hoops the season is barely getting going for the the nba as these teams get ready for the stretch run for the playoffs major league baseball getting going fast and furious now with uh free agents now that the cba has been figured out and they're heading toward their season bet online is your continued source for all the sporting wagering information needs including live betting and even your favorite vegas casino game so go get over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action at bet online where the game starts 
I want to thank everybody again for making Locked On 49ers your first listen every day. Make sure you're following Locked On NFL, Locked On experts covering the biggest stories around the NFL every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. And just like this program, it's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. This is what Jim Trotter, a very respected voice in the NFL, had to say. And he went out of his way to put together a thread about the 49ers and Deshaun Watson. Is there some kind of heat that should be believed behind the scenes why some reporters are connecting Watson and the 49ers? Is this coming from an agent? Is this coming from Watson himself? I have no doubt Watson would like to be with the 49ers, but it just doesn't make sense from the 49ers' perspective. But Jim Trotter put together this thread about Watson and the 49ers. He says, are the 49ers in on Deshaun Watson? Not at this point. It's not something they are pursuing. But there could be a scenario in which that changes. Let's go through it. Again, Jim Trotter, at Jim Trotter underscore NFL. First, Deshaun Watson and his team would have to drive the bus and create an environment in which the 49ers believe they have a credible shot at landing Deshaun Watson. How was that done? Deshaun Watson and his team would essentially have to tell Houston that he will only waive his no trade for San Francisco. Privately, Deshaun Watson has expressed an interest in playing for San Francisco. Then, Deshaun Watson and his team would have to broker a deal knowing that San Francisco does not have the draft capital that Houston desires. It could become a game of chicken then. Deshaun Watson couldn't threaten to sit out a second season, but would he? If Team Watson were to get Houston to reconsider its demands and create an environment in which San Francisco has a legitimate chance of landing Watson, then the 49ers would be willing to engage because Watson is that good. But at this time, the 49ers are not interested in creating unnecessary drama. They like Trey Lance and are happy with him. But at the same time, it could be considered foolish not to seriously look into Watson if a deal can be done. The organization has no plans to meet with Watson at this point. And as I said earlier, they are not pursuing him. But, another but, if he were to create a scenario in which he could fall into their laps, things would get interesting. What do you think about that, Crocky? A whole lot of speculation. You know, this rem- this reminds me of that offseason where, for whatever reason, after the 49ers went to a Super Bowl, and maybe because all the things I just said, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo, like, oh, can he give you that extra little whatever? But there was a lot of talk about Jimmy Garoppolo that entire offseason. I felt like every time you turn on TV, they're talking about Jimmy, and they're talking bad about Jimmy. I'm like, man, what the heck is going on? Like, he's coming off of an ACL. Team goes to the Super Bowl. He's, he's, he's only getting better. Why do they keep talking about Jimmy Garoppolo every single week? And now you see a guy like Jim, Jim Trotter, and, it, and I thought maybe it was a Jimmy G thing, but it, it doesn't stop with Jimmy G. Apparently, it's Trey Lance as well, or anybody that's the quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers. And he says, thing, oh, things could get interesting, this and that. And I'm going to ask you this question. How many teams in the NFL would not consider Deshaun Watson over their current starting quarterback? Tough question with Watson because there's off field involved. Off field step me, aside. Right. Off-field because to me, that would be if I'm the 49ers, disqualification, not interested, period. Right, Go well, have yeah, fun. Chase the talent. That's so if you take that part of it away, just the take talent. Take that part away. So turn back the clock to January of 2021 before the all the stuff came out with Watson, right? All right. How many teams would be interested? All but like five. And so, maybe, so maybe, like to, maybe even all but like three, you know, it's that it, right. the number. you might have, uh, obviously the bills, the, the chiefs, and then the chargers. Now the chargers. Now I would say the Bengals now Bengals, Yeah. Yeah. You know, some teams you could say, <laughs> some teams you could say they could upgrade to Watson talent wise, but would it be worth what they have to give up when they already have a pretty good quarterback? So a lot of teams right. probably not. Um, I would think that, and look, talent reigns in the NFL. The fact that the four teams are hot on Watson right now and are willing to give up the stuff that we're thinking uh, that that's being reported out there that they might give up for Watson, I think it's insane. This guy's going to be suspended for at least six games. He might miss the whole year. This what, is, if they, what if they give him, uh, you know, have you ever uh, applied for something and then, you know, it kind of starts to clock, even though, like, once the process starts and they kind of go back and they give you, like, back pay, jail time, right? I don't know. You know I know you haven't been to jail, but time served. You go, yeah, yeah, they give you time served, right? Like, 
What if they give him time served because he didn't play last season? So they count that as his suspended season? They could say that was his punishment. Because Maybe. he only the say. only reason I feel like the only reason he didn't play was because of all the the circumstances. Like, you know, he's gonna go to work every day and play with all that stuff uh overshadowing what's going on with the organization. Like, you can't do that. So it's like, all right, like he removed himself from that situation. He lost a year's worth of salary or whatever it was. That's his punishment. I'm sure his people will argue that, but that's not why he missed that time. So I maybe, but I don't know. I, I If I'm a team getting Deshaun Watson, I'm operating on the assumption he's going to miss at least six games of this first season. And is that enough to derail that whole season? Then you're trying to get him to win in the first place. And so you better be draft, you better be trading for Watson because of 2023 and beyond. You put it that way. But when it comes to the 49ers and Watson, and look, let's be honest. Let's be honest. When it, you just mentioned it, how it's always with Jimmy Garoppolo, whatever it is, the 49ers always get lumped in here. And there you see 49ers show up a lot. You know why? It's because guys like Jim Trotter is trying to get his name mentioned right here on Locked On 49ers because of the powerhouse that the San Francisco 49ers <laughs> media is and how many eyeballs and ears are on the 49ers, how many fans care about the 49ers. I think that's why the 49ers are talked about a lot in stories that don't make a lot of sense, like this one. Watson can want to go to the 49ers all he wants. The Niners already made their bed. They already made their plan. I would have big-time issues. Like, of all the... Remember, during the course of the season, the Niners didn't start off well, and people were like, oh, I got to fire everybody. Got to start firing Kyle Shanahan. Got to get rid of Jimmy Garoppolo. Got to fire John Lynch and all this stuff. And and we were the voice of reasons like, okay, no, let's let's you know, no hot seat stuff right now. And this would be the first time where I would look at the 49ers front office and say, you got to fire people. If you're going to do something this dumb with a quarterback who has what's going on with the off field, 20 plus women accusing him of this stuff. Like you, you would, you shouldn't want any part of that. If you're the San Francisco 49ers, you should be thanking your lucky stars that you didn't trade for Deshaun Watson last January before this stuff came out. Um, You've got a really good young quarterback that you spent the whole last year trying to develop. Like, what was the point of the plan of everything you went through over the course of the last year if you're ready to move off of that? Like, that's a fireable offense to me. Be smart. Make a plan and stick to it and make sure it's a good plan. And if if trading up for number three wasn't a smart move, you shouldn't have done it in the first place. And I had questions about that, right? But if you have that much faith that it's the right move and you go make a move like that, and now you're willing to move off the guy you just went and got, I I can't have in, have, have faith in your decision-making if you're going to do something right. like that. So it's not yeah. even the beginning of a conversation for me. I don't care how talented Deshaun Watson is. Listen to this. All right, so group chat earlier today uh, with my, you know, the same one as before with the Brennan Ayuk and C.D. Lamb and those guys. Got the Cowboy fans in here, Eagles fan, Buffalo Bills fan, and uh, – my my one of the, one of the 49ers fan posted that 49ers are interested in Deshaun Watson. I was like, they're, they're not interested. And one of the other guys in here, the Eagles fan, says, "So y'all passed on Watson for Lance? Y'all high on meth or fit or, or fit, fentanyl, <laughs> right?" And uh, my brother, diehard Dallas Cowboy fan, had this to say about the 49ers: "That was the right move. Watson is dope, but it ain't nothing Lance can't be." He said, um, Lance has the roof to be great. Will he? I doubt it. And that's just, you know, being realistic. Like, will, most people don't reach their, their ceiling. He said, will he? I doubt it. He said, but the opportunity is there with the right coaches. He said, um, people fall in love with players too much. You know, and, and his thing was saying, like, okay, like, Watson is good. But, like, he's nothing that Trey Lance can't be. Now, again, will he get there? I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see. But he has all the ability, all the talent. And he possesses do so and with the right coaching and the right mental makeup, he can become your own version of Deshaun Watson. And you know, that's what people the patience though to run a guy out of there just because he started two games and it ain't Deshaun Watson yet. Well, I'll be like, well, go back and watch Deshaun Watson's first two games. Because his first game, it looked really weird. He came in at, at halftime. It was whatever. And then his actual first start against the Cincinnati Bengals, he had that big run play. But outside of that, I'm like, he can't really throw the football. And then the next thing you know, 
it bombs away every game. Bombs away, bombs away, bombs. I mean, touchdown, touchdown. He's going crazy. He's on like this historic pace, and then he tears his ACL. But if you would have just given up on him after the first two games because it just looked a, a little like, uh, I don't know, like, I don't know, it's real, uh, real weird looking, like you would have never gotten to the version of what Deshaun Watson is now. And obviously, more experience, played in college, played against Alabama, big stage, superstar. I get all that. But in the sense of talent that he possesses, like, you got to let this stuff play out. But everybody's in such a rush to get, like, no, nah, forget this process of this. I want right now, right now, right now. I've got one more note on this whole situation as it pertains to Trey Lance. And we got to talk Hassan Ridgeway. Is he the replacement for DJ Jones on the 49ers roster? Coming up. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With ever the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now possible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. And why endure that often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning? Like, is your odyssey an lx or an ex or like with my uh mazda cx5 there's like a, a a touring and a grand touring and i never remember which one it is you go to rockauto.com it's so easy you've got an auto parts store in your pocket with rockauto.com and oh yeah it's just as easy for do-it-yourselfers as it is for professionals so why go to those big auto parts stores and choose to spend 30, 50, even hundred percent more on the same auto parts from a chain store or a car dealership. For example, that same Honda Odyssey, you can find a fuel pump for $353 retail at one of those stores. You can go to rockauto.com and get that same part for the same vehicle for $216. That's what I'm talking about at rock auto, a family owned business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years so head over to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck and i'm telling you their stock is just about endless and they do have what you need for your vehicle right locked on in there how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you amazing selection reliably low prices all the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com last note on the trey land stuff and this is the part of it that won't work for me um, aside from the off-field stuff with with uh, with Deshaun Watson. But as Trotter lays out there, um, it's what you would have to give up to get him. The 49ers spent three first-round picks on Trey Lance. Let's say if this all came together and the Niners were super interested in Watson and the off-field stuff got completely cleared up and Watson wanted to play for the 49ers. The Houston Texans better treat Trey Lance like three first-round picks or we're not even having a conversation. I'm not trading Trey Lance and picks and picks and picks and players for anybody. Trey Lance is a three first round pick player. And if you don't view him that way, like we viewed him, then we can't even start talking about trade compensation. So uh, that's they the don't. This. Right. And they probably, you know, I, I, John Harris, uh, John Harris covers the Texans. Uh, you know, he covers them sideline reporter, radio stuff. He, he does all that. And he also comes on locked on NFL draft. Every Tuesday, uh, well, we record every Tuesday, so every Wednesday when y'all listen to him. But yeah, he said like they like Davis Mills, they like the development and, and where he's at. And again, that goes back to you know however you view the guy pre-draft, it doesn't matter. All that matters is where a guy is now and where his you know progression is. And you know Trey Lance played well against Houston, and I don't think they had him as high as the 49ers did on their on their draft board from from the sounds of it. But he played well. He looks good. But it's like, dude, they they've seen. Davis Mills played very well, and they believe that there's something there with Mills. So they don't even want – they don't want Trey Lance. They're not just going to throw away Davis Mills, who they feel is playing well just because 49ers spent three first-round picks on Trey Lance, who might be more physically gifted, but they like where Mills is headed. And Mills is another guy, guy that was a little green coming out, right? He only played like 14 games, but he's a former five-star. I believe he was the, like the number one quarterback in his class. He was hampered with injuries, so he only played like 13, 14 games at Stanford. But the upside was there so much so that his head coach felt like if he would have came back for another year, he would have been a top five pick in that class. And maybe the number, the first of all quarterback, which would have been this draft, which I think there's a, there's an argument for that. If he would have went back and played for David Shaw. Yeah. Could so at least in the first round like, conversation right there with, with Kenny Pickett, as far as what you're looking at yeah. and, and all the, the tools and everything that a prospect brings to the table. I, I think he'd be in that Pickett conversation. Sure. So it couldn't happen. It can't even happen because 
unless you have a three-way deal going on somehow, some way, because they're like, no, we're, we, we like Mills. We're, we're good here. We don't need Trey Lance. So if you take Trey Lance off the table, what would the 49ers have to give up to go get a Watson and while excluding Trey Lance? And then you still have to move him because once you get Deshaun Watson, I mean, he, he's, his contract is for several years. So now you got to get rid of Trey Lance. And do you <laughs> then you still have Jimmy Garoppolo? You could have Lance Watson and Garoppolo all in the same roster at the same time. Yeah, only a hundred million dollars in quarterbacks per year, but you know you'll be all right. <laughs> I will say though, uh, if the if the Colts are dragging their feet on Garoppolo, they did have their whatever. You know, how the 49ers put a gold helmet next to a guy on their draft board. The Colts have that same thing, and they only had that on two guys in the first round on their draft board. One of them was, I believe, the guy they drafted who was uh, the, the the pass rusher out of Michigan, um, and whose name escapes me right now. Quid who, Quiddy Pay or Quiddy Pay. So one of them was Quiddy Pay, who they drafted. The other one was Trey Lance. So wow. that's probably a place the 49ers could trade Trey Lance is Indianapolis. Now, three first round pick value. That's going to be tough for the 49ers to get back. Uh, and that would also signal something very bad about the 49ers. They're scouting that the fact that they don't. They want to. They would be willing to move off of Trey Lance, which I don't think is the case at all. And overpaying for somebody that they end up not liking and not knowing who they were going to even take when they traded up in the first place. And the crazy thing about it, it's not the case, and it's all uh, media speculation. Like Trotter was saying, like oh, they're not going to do it. They're not interested. They like Trey Lance, but if they wanted Watson, they can do all these different crazy things. It, it's you know. Oh, also with the media, well. Trey Lance hasn't played in Jimmy Garoppolo, this and that. So what does that tell you? He's not good. They don't like him. And it's like, well, no, they just value Jimmy Garoppolo and, and the ability to, I don't know, reach the Super Bowl, reach the NFC Championship game. And he they know in that moment, he was he would be good in that moment. I don't think it had anything to do with Trey Lance and where he's at in his development. Like, you know, but a lot of it is media-driven type stuff. I think the 49ers are just fine with Trey Lance and have no issues. Yeah, same here. Uh, if my dad was here, you know what he would say to Deshaun Watson? He'd say, okay, Deshaun, you you wish you were on the San Francisco 49ers. But I tell you what, you wish in one hand and you know what in the other hand and see which hand fills up faster. That's what my dad would say to Deshaun. <laughs> Hassan Ridgeway, the latest San Francisco 49ers, according to ESPN's Jeremy Fowler, is signing with the 49ers on a one-year $2.5 million contract with 1 million of that fully guaranteed experienced versatile defensive tackle will be a key piece of San Francisco rotation has six years in the league after stints with the Colts and Eagles. And I bet Hassan Ridgeway earned some favor with the 49ers by showing out against those San Francisco 49ers. And, um, and a lot of what times that happens, you play well against the team that team likes you and, and wants to bring you in. So uh, to me, and I've seen a lot of this. I don't think Hassan Ridgeway is a replacement at all for DJ Jones. I think maybe just because you need depth and you wanted to add a player to your roster. He doesn't play a similar brand of DJ Jones. He is a, a bit of a penetrator like DJ Jones is, but he's nowhere near that that one technique nose tackle style of player where he's going to two gap all day long or anything like that. Uh, but he is a penetrator. He does have some pass rush skills. I think he could give you some net snaps at the one tech, uh, but mostly he's more of a three technique type of guy, a rotational player. He's not making a lot of money. If anything, he's going to be more of a replacement for uh, Contavious Street, who the 49ers did not tender a restricted free agent uh, contract to. So more of a depth piece. And, you know, he could play a few snaps at probably one technique, backing up both Armstead and Javon Kinlaw. But I think he'll be a key backup and rotational interior player for the San Francisco 49ers. And now that the Niners have Armstead, who's restructured, so the Niners could get under the salary cap and pay all these free agents, and Javon Kinlaw as the starters, then you've got Kevin Givens coming back. You've got Maurice Hurst coming back. And now they sign Hassan Ridgeway. That's five defensive tackles. I think you're starting to see what that unit might look like for the interior defensive line for the 49ers. But Ken Law has never really played that one technique for the 49ers and been the starting nose tackle type for the 49ers. He's got his injury history. You know, he's still developing as a player. If he's out and those injuries keep popping up, uh, Ridgeway's not really that guy. He could do a little bit of it. But <laughs> do the 49ers need to add another bigger 
bodied two gapper type of a player. And that could be in free agency. And that could even be in the draft. I feel like they do have to have that player to, to plug the run and, and be sure that they're covered at that t- style of guy, because uh, I don't think Ridgeway is the replacement for DJ Jones stylistically. Yeah. Maybe that's what the four nines do. I mean, think about where they drafted DJ Jones. Wasn't it fourth or fifth round? Uh, it was a sixth round and the 49ers yesterday wow. just got two more late sixth round comp picks too. So they got, right, three so, you know, rounds. not, not saying you'll, 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 you know, hit a home run with another DJ Jones in the sixth round, but you know, get a guy that maybe fits the profile of exactly what you're looking at, but maybe isn't as high profile as like a Jordan Davis or one of those guys, you know, and there's some, there's some guys that can be some space eaters and some one text or zero text that, you might need to line up there in the middle and be able to take on some doubles and still kind of anchor down. So yeah, man, uh, you know, spend a couple of draft draft picks on, on, on those guys, or at least one guy and bring them in. And if he develops the right way, Hey, maybe eventually he can be the long-term guy or at least a guy for the next four years. We will hit the film and have a little bit deeper scouting report on Hassan Ridgeway. We're out of time today, uh, but t- tomorrow we'll come back, talk a little bit more about him, maybe talk about some other free agents that the 49ers sign. Maybe we'll be talking about some big movement in the NFL as far as quarterbacks go, and who knows, maybe Jimmy Garoppolo will be traded in the next 24 hours or so. I think Croc and I, we're going to do a little uh, little live Thursday night. Yeah, okay, we're going to go live Thursday night here, Locked On 49ers. It's always a lot of fun, so come hang out with us on YouTube and join into the chat, and we'll talk about whatever's going on with your San Francisco 49ers. Thanks for making us your first listen every day for your second listen. Check out Croc doing the Locked On NFL Draft podcast daily. I'm talking about the entire league on the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Also right here on the network, Croc and I, back tomorrow right here, Locked On 49ers.